So, chapter 5, Qualarium. Al Guriel was concerned that the monsters might be able to swim here to her home. The strained, strange future structure Octorania had been so close for so long that it, its glass roofs would soon all break down break down and if they were allowed to freely enter the sea they could contaminate all the marine life there the consequences would be catastrophic 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 or what the hell. It would be soon that they rifted in the ships than in the land. Does this I have to say that the my mother language language is Finnish, so so my English is like a little bit some mistakes here. Or spelling or whatever, but, the, but I try to fix them to spell them right, but the, whatever. But I hope you can understand. Many sea monsters here were unknown to humans, but with them, mermaids could live. She now sat on her, her own drowned own thinking about this threat she would have hoped that someone would have already destroyed these monsters by now that such the danger would not exist Alcuriel now relieved heavily on a brave man, Captain Daniel. Even, even though she knew that one man could not handle this, or could he? She should not have left this man in trouble, but leaving was necessary. Now she sensed Daniel's great pain but would have been torn apart but would have been born torn apart if she had stayed with him Daniel probably I mean she would have been torn apart if she stayed with him yeah, yeah. Daniel probably considered her departure as a cruel betrayer betrayal betrayal yeah the most positive thing about this was that Daniel was still alive anyway his condition just couldn't be sensed despite her extraordinary abilities Al Gurier was not a goddess. The water of this underwater kingdom was the name of this underwater kingdom was Qualarium. It was a huge swimming pool like area with a whose huge transparent foam above it that sea water could not penetrate. Numerous different colored lights were attached to its surface, which was a fantastic sight to see. Oh, what a legendary place this was indeed! Only a few selected creatures were allowed to live here. 
The dome is also protected against sea monsters. The pool was 10 kilometers in diameter. The water was a kilometer deep and it had in, was, was in sea water. It was purer water than anyone anywhere else. Dwellings were located underwater over a wide area. In the middle of the pool rose up both the water surface, ten high transparent glass towers. Their distance was one kilometer apart. Kilometer long bridges connected them all together. Mermaids and others could work in towers for a certain time until they had to return underwater to their homes. All inhabitants of Kualarium had gathered, gathered on the water surface to listen to what Queen Alguriel had to say. Only a few had heard of this dangerous journey. Alguriel's throne was at one end of the pool, right by the water's edge. Well then, dear inhabitants of Gualarium, I have returned from my dangerous journey outside. Has something happened what we should all worry? Asked mermaid named Astrael, the commander of Alguriel's bodyguards. I have sad news, the evil of Octorania is now to be released and we are no longer safe. What lives there in Octorania, someone asked. The monsters that even I did not dare to encounter. I know one of who do fearlessly by my side. I betrayed Daniel by coming here, but if I had stayed with him, I wouldn't know about, you wouldn't know about this. The monsters can swim and could destroy us in an instance. <coughs> we know how to fight, Gwen Alguriel, said Astral. I believe that, but we need this outsider's help. We can trust the cold, greedy pirate. A totally evil man. If you believe he will save us, you are mistaken, Alguriel. He is Daniel, the terror of pirates, a magnificent captain. He is not dead, but I sense great pain and agony. We should go there, Astral. No way, many shouted in protest. Has our dear queen fallen in love with that human creature? Someone asked. I'm not in love, he is just a good man. I regret leaving him in trouble. You care about him more than any human man ever. You can't hide that from me, Alcuriel. I know you. If you go to him, you do it alone, Astral stated. You forget who is queen here, dear Astral.
that human has clouded your judgment. I will return to him within two days and intend to bring him here. We can stop you either, Alcuriel, Astral finally stated. Alcuriel cared for Daniel and wanted to go to, to the man despite the dangers. Chapter 6 Lurking Death Daniel's son James ran for his life in the darkness. He had lost his mother many hours ago. If he could estimate the time correctly. He was all alone and unarmed like his father. Something was chasing him and it was close. He found the metal cabinet to hide in. The monster slowly emerged from darkness and stopped at the cabinet. So this idea came a lot from the from the video game Alien Isolation because it's so so similar than in that game. It growled horribly. James' heart was punching like a drum and he dared not to breathe. Then the monster finally moved on. He breathed loudly but didn't dare leave there for a long time. The monster was not stupid. It would have been able to open the cabinet's door. It could have struck it gloves through the metal piercing that young man. Maybe it just went to wait for the boy to think he was safe and then come back. He carefully opened the door again and didn't see it but stayed inside still. He was scared. After an eternity, James finally dared to open the door again and left his refuge. He was hungry, tired and missed his parents terribly. Boy didn't get far away war when he heard the terrible growl again. He stopped to listen to where his predator was moving but heard no sounds. He was sure he would ever see his parents alive again. He continued his journey alone alertly, although that would have been the easiest solution. He had the same courage deep inside as his father, and thanks to that he would survive. His father was the terror of pirates, and so so had he wanted to be, but the horrors of this place were something else. He couldn't save his parent, could he even save himself? Octorania would be like a hell from which there is no escape. Here too he would die. Or maybe after that he should die again, again and again, repeatedly. Why did such a place exist? Uh, this place was supposed to be originally hell, but 
but it's not. <laughs> it go a little different direction anyway. This certainly did not belong to that beautiful underwater world that he would like to explore. Who knows how many monsters still lurk lurking in the Octorania. And against them there should be some weapon that could destroy them. James didn't guess. Uh, James didn't guess that there would be numerous monsters here. But it would belong would become clear to him in time if he survived even from this one. The underwater world should contain more than such dead and bloodthirsty monsters. A tormenting silence revealed and the lights flickered disturbantly. The long corridor branched off. He didn't know whether to go straight ahead or left or right. He decided to go to left. James was not sure in which direction the monster had gone. From a where on from a bar, a distant click was heard, wallowed by deep silence. Some liquid, liquid dripped into on the floor beside him, and he looked up in horror. Yeah, of course, this is taken from Alien, of course. <laughs> then he saw its eyes and snake-like tentacles, the same as the one his father had encountered and almost fell over. The tentacles reached, reached for him but he managed to touch touch hiding was no longer an option now it would catch him he ran so damn fast but after 300 meters he was out of breath the monster did not slow down at any stage and continued the chase. Soon he saw a door like he had never seen before. He couldn't open it, but it opened by itself. He saw a large room, perfect darkness, refailed. There were long tables with all kinds of small items on them. He hid behind one of one with his heart pounding and listened. The monster waited at the doorway and it guessed he was there. James could see enough that there was no other way out of the room. He could snake, sneak into the corridor if he could lure, could lure it away from the doorway. Opening the door would probably reveal that intention too. Escaping would not remove the threat and revealing danger of death. Fighting would also 
very likely have same outcome. Fear South Fear should be forgotten. Same scattered courage and do a small object to the back of the room. It aroused the creature's in interest, but it sensed it was some kind of plot. Suddenly, it started shouting and rapids, rapidsing while the uh. <laughs> It forcefully swept all the items on the table into the floor and knocked over the entire table. Now it rushed through the next table straight towards him. Snake-like tentacles grabbed the boy by his hands and feet. Same tried to, in vain to struggle free. <clears throat> However, someone else was in a room with the boy and the monster. This third one struck the monster in the back powerfully with a spear like sharp weapon. It went so deep that James could see the blade when it pierced through its chest. The other girl held in the one end of the weapon and the monster could not hit it. James was released from its grip and saw his other girl. It was his mother. Now ang anger took over him and forced him to act. The tentacles grabbed his mother and threw her on the floor. But it pulled out the sharp weapon from itself and thought it would gain an advance. James attacked and hit something in its eye. It knocked him it knocked him down and he repaired to kill. Mir Miriam thrust a sharp weapon straight into its head and it well immediately. They started hacking its body mani manically and didn't stop until it was dead. They exhausted themselves entirely in vain there. After all, it was just the one monster. It's dead, my son, Miriam said. They hugged each other, relieved, and collected everything useful from the room. They didn't shatter unnecessarily, but left the room and continued down the corridor to the left. The headshot had killed the monster, that was certain. There its body remained in a noble solitude. You will certainly have imagined it moving. But it was dead. Chapter 7 Iron Hand
we are here. I'm just unlocking the laboratory door with my electromagnetic stun tool, which resists the lock codes. The door is damaged and I won't open according the normal protocol. The little robot explained, but Daniel didn't understand a thing. A thing. His hand was almost melted, only the solder was left. It was lucky that the melting wasn't faster. It had been an hour since the robot had saved him. Shut up talking tin can. Tin can. I don't understand what language you're bubbling to me. And I don't care a bit. My hand has melted. My default language is English which you should understand. Other languages are rarely used anymore. And as for your hand, I promise the pain will end soon. You probably can't grow my hand back, can you? Just a kill skill has not been programmed into me but there are other ways. The door soon opened and the Daniel stood in a laboratory room. What's next, Tin Can? I am XCF145597. A robot, robot, prototype from the 2344 model. The word tin can refers the cans in which humans of the Homo sapiens species used to store woods stuff in the past. Now you could lie down on that platform so I can check your condition before we start taking necessary precautions. I'm Captain Daniel, thanks for your help, robot prototype, whatever. What's that table doing to me? Going to do to me? Just lie down on it and relax. Daniel did as the wood ball sized little robot asked. Wait a second, there wasn't any wood ball in a in that time period. <laughs> Whatever. He closed his eyes and well asleep. He left himself at the mercy of that future robot. The robot went to a small console and typed it with its tiny hands. It closed the laboratory door, such a case, so that no one or nothing would come to interrupt, interrupt this Procedure, procedure, preventing the spread of worrying virus to vital organs by performing amputation that removes the stump of the hand. The subject is sedated and I'm now isolating the infection area. The subject is 37 year old male who has encountered a dangerous organism. It's a 
contains containers disease corrosive acidic liquid has melted his hand the robot dialectic to itself the amputation was be performed in a few minutes and the virus had no time to spread in the Daniel's body. He would have melted in entirely without the robot's ex existence, or could have turned into a monster, ready to install new hand, the necessary robotic hand prototype is found and is imme immediately ready for use. The little robot performed the procedures without asking Daniel's permission, who was still unconscious. Half an hour later, Daniel woke up and looked at his left hand in horror. What the hell have you done to me, Tin Can? All necessary things. You Now you have a new hand, Daniel. I am pleased to announce that the virus did not infect your body. You are completely fine. The attachment of the hand went without complications. This is not a hand, it's iron. Why are you using such strange words? Now it's 1748, if Mr. Tin Can doesn't know. Impossible. Impossible, now it's... 2351 if you are the low intelligence level of an 18th century human you cannot understand my words I didn't notice although I'm the top level robot I still don't understand how you can be 603 years old You must be from the future. Good point. I am not aware that I have been moved to the past. Such technology is, of course, available that allows time travel, but its use is strictly monitored and restricted. Sensing history is a crime. My imagination doesn't stretch to this. I'm just a sailor whose ship was destroyed and ended up at the bottom of the sea. Are we at the bottom of the sea? That's why it's so dark here. Someone started me only 13.9 days ago and I'm as wise as you are Daniel I haven't been able to assess access databases yet that would reveal what has happened here you look unwell you look unwell you need nutrition There is not a single cook here to repair food for me. I haven't eaten anything since I got here and must find out how long it's been. I have lost track of time. You have been without food for 2.3 days and haven't slept at all. You know better than I do. 
And it's true, I can't do anything anymore. Go to that table on the wall, it asks what you want to eat and you can get any food. It doesn't look the same, but it tastes the same. Daniel was as amazed again, but did as robot suggest. What would you like, sir? The table asked. Where is the cook talking table? The cook was an ancient profession of humans, which was not been pra practiced for 352 years. Since then, food was been provided by food automatons like me. Rest assured, the food is high quality. Can you repair food that sailors eat in 1748? Of course, it doesn't cause any difficulties, sir. How can I get fish without fishing it first? People haven't done that either in 300 years. The future human is la lazy, Daniel stated, telling the automaton that he wanted to eat what he wanted to eat. He took his own delicacy of salmon and it looked like something completely different in addition to salmon and potatoes. It was his best meal ever, as unbelievable as it was. To get such a delicacy is in such, such hell, a hellish place and most amazingly without reparation. He thought it was magic. He was recommended Coca-Cola for a drink, which he decided to try. It didn't fit his idea of drink with the meal. The robot thought he needed sugar. What is this sugar water drink that makes me burp so much? It was a popular drink in the 1900s and 2000s, the table said. People, don't, people probably don't have teeth when they drink this. He still couldn't believe that the robot could conjure up magic. Otherwise, his left hand would have grown back. How could the food be so good without a cook? He fell asleep after eating. Daniel hadn't been on a food break for long when the little robot came wake him up. Time to wake up, even though sleep still tastes good, tastes good. Damn right, sleep will taste good. What's the hurry? Nothing, we are safe for now. Then let me sleep, Tin Can. I'm afraid I can't allow that. Get out of here. I can't obey. Well then, by sea monsters, what do you want? My intention is to teach you hand control. So that's what it is. How can this be controlled? You see, the hand has great features. You will need 
in this place. This is a prototype, not the latest version of the hand. What is a version? It's a more advanced model with more features. I don't understand any of these things as a stupid sailor. This is Iron Hand, some kind of weapon. Is this Iron Hand some kind of weapon? Yes, I will show you the instructions now. Now a large screen appeared out of nowhere. And there was blue skinned character on it. Who had hand attached. Sadly that blue color is totally taken from Avatar, but uh, I should have used some other color. Whatever. What is this? A ghost hologram rest assured it's harmless. Welcome. We are now going through the main features of this robotic uh, hand robotype. Prototype, the hologram explained in a woman's voice. What? Who are you? Daniel asked in amazement. It doesn't hear. Just watch this instructional video quietly, robot replied. What is video? Never mind. I won't ask anymore. The hologram of the person appeared in a video instructed the witchers of the hand for one half hour and Talian tried them all out. Great weapon! Now for the first time he even admired his new hand. He internalized the most important things for his survival. The automatic protection mode sounded quite promising. It was hard to believe that he had gotten such a, web, such a weapon. <coughs> Someone started banging on a door hard which didn't bode well. <coughs> Unknown organism detected behind the door, witching to standby mode. XCF145597 announced. Whatever was behind the door could get in soon despite the strong metal door. There was no escape road, road, escape route from the laboratory. Only through that, only through that same door, Daniel instinctively began to look for something that could sell, serve as a weapon, even though he already had one. What do I can do now? Tin can. I recommend you repair for an encounter with this unknown organism. There are no other options. You have received the necessary instructions for using your hand. Remember, your new hand is magnificent weapon, Daniel. With it, you can find and win very easily. The durability of the door is now 42.7%. Its power is great. Organism, where does such a word come from? With that term, I refer that creature, monster. Now I don't have more time to answer your questions, Daniel. The two ability 
the durability of the door is now 15.8%. Haven't you fought this, fought, fought these creatures when you are so afraid of them? I have avoided them, but fear has not been programmed into me. Fear is a dangerous feeling in humans. Wait, I will recheck your hand. The robot ex examined his ha new arm hand. You are ready, it announced. Daniel forget his fear and prepared for the encounter. Like any other pirate mission. The monsters broke the door when its durability was 6%. As the robot occasionally listed. Daniel needed to understand why it was so precise in numbers. X C F one four five five nine seven opened fire on a monster, but it wasn't afraid of bullets. It came to the words with wars and grabbed the robot. Tearing it apart. And then it turned its gaze to Daniel. The monster came forward with rage but suddenly stopped. It didn't do it of its own will. But it was caused by Daniel's new hand. The hand soaked the monster and threw it against the wall. It went a new attack, but the robotic hand hit it so hard that knife sharp teeth flew around. The hand grabbed it again by the throat. Daniel pressed some bottoms and a kind of weapon came out of the arm of the hand. Of the arm of the... That's some kind of weird sentence, but whatever. It started up and powerful laser beam, beam laser beam pierced through the monster's head. This creature didn't have snake-like tentacles. It was very different compared to others. He flew its body further, farther, further away and went to the robot. Good peculiar this new hand of mine. Powerful weapon, I like it. You did excellently in b b b b battle. You, 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 you can be, be, be happy about. You, you, you can be, 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 be happy your, about your weapon. I am uh, out of order. I can. No longer be for Go and find your destiny, Daniel. It said the robot and the light in his red eyes went out permanent, permanently. What did that know about my destiny? Never mind, time to move on. He said aloud to himself and left left for the corridor. No other monsters were inside in the corridor, but he wouldn't let them surprise him anymore. 
he could destroy them one by one, but even with his new hand, he could die in several attacks. He could never forget the pain of losing his hand, and the painful as it was, as painful as it was. He would never get his left hand back. It would always be metal. There would be more good sides, sides to an iron hand though. The web new hand didn't fear feel pain and couldn't be destroyed easily. The outer cell was pure, pure titanium. He was curious to know if the hand was made in the future or long ago. And chapter 8. Captain Dirty Beard. There were also pirates living in Octorania. You would think the monsters there would have killed all the humans who ended up there. Seven pirates had lived in Octorania for seven years with the help of a single wood automaton from which food and drink practically could never run out. No one else had any business there. They had made the place so safe that they couldn't even get out of there. They preferred to keep themselves trapped and the monsters at bay. The men wallowed the wicked captain Adam Dirty Beard, whose long beard was always dirty. The men were not allowed to speak ill of his beard. They had also collected treasures in a room which though they could never get out of there with them. There were originally originally 17 men in Captain Dirty Bart's crew. Two had grown at sea, grown, grown, at sea, while the remaining nine had made it inside Octorania. The first two years drove two pirates into the brick of madness as they had to be sat so that others could sleep. They could only avoid encountering monsters once they found this sanctuary. Five, after five years there were only 13 men left. Three of them got tired of being in a group and they wandered, wandered on their own while others were sleeping and they have yet to return. They probably died but Dirty Beard refused to look for them. It was better to be safe than risk more men. They fortified themselves and didn't leave there anymore at all. Gradually they got used to living in isolation. The sixth year survived without losses, losses. At the beginning of the seventh year, one man went crazy and tried to murder Dirty Beard while he was sleeping. Two others killed themselves by slitting their throats. 
The last man ran away and the monsters probably killed him. Two, only these six pirates remained. But none went mad. A tightened group worked better. They had lived in perfect harmony for the last few months. Oh, fuck. None of them had considered disappearing from here. And place they had strangely considered home for years already. Dirty Beard was no longer inter interested in his death and his missing men. No one's life was worth anything to him. Probably those five men wouldn't stand him much longer. And some of them probably thought about murdering the captain. No one here would be conv convinced of murder, convicted of murder, or Dirty Beard would eventually kill them all. Seven years was a long time and it was a miracle that they were still alive. No one else in this hellish place had survived alive so long. For so long. Maybe some greater power protected these pirates. Or survival was such damn good luck. It would be nice to finally get out of here, out of this prison after so many years. Said one of Adam Dirtybeard's men named Robert. Shut up, bullet skull. This is not the prison. We are abundant. Be grateful for what we have here, Adam said. The nickname bullet skull originated when a bullet pierced Robert's skull and stayed there. Somehow the bullet managed to keep this pirate alive. The other other names was Zack Shorthand, Thomas the Wool, David Gunpowder Barrel, Robin Rumpair, and Isaac the Idiot Pirate. Adam had named his, named his crew with these funny names, which usually related in some way to their personality. Verse names were rarely used. Everyone was called by their nickname. Bullet Skull is not the only one who wants out of here, Captain Dirty Beard shorthand stated. Not so true as rum, rum, rum bottle, he ahoy, he ahoy, said rum beard. This piece often featured the word rum, and that's how he got his name. It has become clear that we are of all want out of here since there are no women no women for us here if only we could get to the mermaids said the idiot bandit there is no outside world for us anymore this hall is our home now and those monsters that came from hell can't get to us but so but as soon as we leave here, I won't be able, won't be long before we die. Dirty Beard stated and was quite right. Of course, some secretly thought 
that the captain had become a coward who didn't have enough men to waste the monsters with the sword. A captain just doesn't care to leave here. The captain just doesn't get there to leave here, Bullet Skull said aloud his truth. This truth. Silence, Bullet Skull, or you will get another bullet in your stick skull. Dirty Beard shouted. More rum to the table, rum, rum Beard said, regardless of those two. Unfortunately, my rum stock has just run out. No one has used my service for seven years before. There is still enough water, but the food stock is almost starting to be empty. I calculated that you have used my services for another you can use my services for another two days. If you want more, find another amount automaton. There are 15 like me all over Octorania. According to my calculations, only seven are working. By the rum, this can't be true. Ram, take, take me away, oh Ram God, indeed, my drum head is breaking. Maybe now it's time for you to learn the, to be clear-headed, said Shorthand. All good things come to an end, apparently said Gunpowder Barrel in turn. Let me think about solution to this for two days though, said Captain Dirtybeard. You may have been a captain for the ship, but here you don't command anyone anymore. You are not the same man I was happy to wallow, said Bullet Skull and drew his sword. They winced fiercely until they calmed down. That was a good fight, Cap. At least you're still fit for battle. But I'm still the best swordman in this crew, said Shorthand. I remember one swordsman who was better than all of us. Everyone addressed that captain by the name Terror of Pirates. He almost killed me too, took my left leg, that damn devil, and threw it overboard. I didn't drown, and I so swore revenge. He's probably dead, so that too remains unavenged. It's a wonder my nickname isn't Captain Peckleg or Putenleg. Dirty Beard remained. He had in indeed survived Captain Daniel's, Daniel's encounter alive. Which was quite a miracle. He fought, fought sharks with a sword for days as they tried to eat him. He killed almost ten sharks until he swam to a nearby island waiting for other pirate ships. One ship picked him up three days later and he was given a wooden leg. He didn't like the ship's captain and killed him in a duel. In the cap if the captain had won, he 
he could have kept his position. Adam wanted all power for himself on the ship and never agreed to anyone's subordination. The crew of this ship became his own. Daniel killed his previous crew, crew, but now he had a new one. He would still take revenge on him if he got the chance. It wasn't even a year when Thirty Beard and his men well in the cruises of this strange storm that sunk their ship and ended up in Octorania. Captain Woodenhead would be your best name, Bullet Skull stated. What was the name of this pi the pirate's terror? The wool asked. Daniel, Dirty Beard explained, full of hatred towards that arch, arch enemy. He even thought his hatred towards bullet skill for a moment. Even forgot. Captain Daniel was a skilled swordman. I would give anything now to be able to waste just a silencing opponent again. It doesn't matter if I die, it would still be an honor, said sword hand admirably. admiringly. Daniel is mine if he's still alive, not yours, Saki boy, said Dirty Beard. All right, Swordhand added. Do you believe he's here too? Bullet Skull asked. It's possible, yes, I would think so, but very unlikely, replied Dirty Beard. And exact moment, someone or something began to make its way towards them. Obstacles quickly moved out of the way between the pirates and the intruder. They drew their swords. The idiot bandit and the wool took two pistols in both hands and posi positioned them. Them, themselves on each side of the door. Be ready for anything, men. The obstacles at the door practically exploded into pieces. When a strange red beam of light hit them, finally the heavy metal, finally the heavy metal door gave way and well over. There was complete silence and nothing attacked them or was, or was patient. I will look down the hallway, said the wool. Someone drew a detected hand of a dirty beard's feet. If this was someone's idea of humor, the hand belonged to the monster, not the human. The fool peeked out of door with his pistols ready, but he barely saw the intru in intruder when its mighty hand pierced his chest chest and threw him against the wall brutally. The idiot bandit rushed in the rushed into the hallway, screaming in rage. But the powerful opponent ripped his head off and tossed it in the dirty bear's lap. Fuck. He threw it away, feeling disgusting sensations. 
Come out, co coward! Don't just slaughter my man there! I'm dirty beard, face me like a man, show yourself! Then Daniel stepped forward without revealing his new hand. He intended to handle those two pirates less roughly, but still he needed to learn how to control his new hand. Now he decided not to attack if any of those five remaining pirates didn't try anything stupid. You, Daniel, sounded dirty bird, dirty bear, beard. Well, dirty beard alive and well, I would have imagined you as the last one here to meet. I promise I wouldn't, would not, wouldn't, won't kill you if you put your shorts down. How can I trust you when you rip, rip off my man's head? I know you hate us pirates, but that fighting style is disgraceful. You didn't even give them a chance to fight, but they were my worst men. Dirty Bird said in a tone like he didn't like give a rat's ass of to those men. By the rum, we won't miss those two idiots at the Trombier. Better killed by the terror of pirates and stupid monsters, said David Pow Gunpowder Barrel. I don't understand that good at that cold attitude of pirates towards their comrades. At least I appreciate my true crew, Daniel said to that. Where is your crew that you ap appreciate so much? asked Zack shorthand. Dead as my family, but that what does it matter to you? It's rather I'd rather kill you all than discuss this anymore, Daniel said. Then die, Daniel. I can't stand looking at you either, shouted Zack Shorthand, and raised his sword to strike. Daniel's left hand stopped the sword and broke it, its blade as it is where as if it were paper. The other men also went on attack one after another, but flew one after another to the floor. Daniel grabbed the sword in his normal hand and winced hard with sword hand. He playfully buried Dirty beards and rompier beards blades with his iron hand. He didn't use his hand to kill, but disarmed the pirates. The iron hand held Zack by the road in the air, and the sword of his right hand rested on Dirty Beard's throat, ready to stab. The pirates died quickly, and Daniel was not tired from fighting. Otherwise, he felt stronger than usual. As if monster DNA had ended up in his body after all. Are you surrendering yet? I don't want to kill all of you. If I wanted to, you would already be dead. We surrender, said Robert's bullet skull. What have you really become, Daniel? asked Dirty Beard curiously. 
as the sword left his throat alone. You have no idea what it felt like to lose an entire hand. It melted and I got this iron hand. It's the background sound that's in this video but I don't I hope it's fine we want those two by the Rome God you must have met those tin cans that call themselves robots this blade is places quit strains said David I'm hang hungry so want I won't kill you, continue to kill you, even though you are pirates. Step aside, the food out machine is calling, Daniel said. Stop, it's ours, Zack exclaimed, raising his sword but staggered backward as the iron hand approached. You don't own this place. Smoked white fish and water, please. <clears throat> so now you have heard the eight chapters of my Octorania book. And I have done the sound effects good as possible and I especially proud of my robot voice what I used here earlier and uh, I hope it's funny and nice to listen next time chapter 9 cursed seamen <laughs>